On February 2nd, 2024, the Apple Vision Pro released in the USA for $3,500. And I'll be honest, I've had very mixed thoughts on how I want to tackle it. On paper, the Apple Vision Pro has higher specifications than the Quest 3 with its M2 processor, higher resolution pass-through cameras, and higher resolution displays. But in practicality and use case, when I watch the marketing material and reviews, as somebody who develops immersive experiences and help build several VR-based training products for government clients in Canada, and I'm currently developing a spatially computed AI-powered experience for Quest 3, I have to rip the band-aid off and be very candid about what kind of potential I see for the Vision Pro as it is today. Right now, the consumer incentive for getting a Vision Pro is quite low, primarily due to its cost. And it's only been very recently that MetaQuest 2 has even begun to see a massive surge in user adoption. And Quest 3 currently remains the cheapest device for getting into true mixed reality. And the short summary of what I think is that the Vision Pro is great hardware with woefully undercooked software and vision for the future. So let's talk about some comparisons between the Vision Pro and the Quest 3. To start, the Vision Pro only allows you to have one monitor rendered on your screen if you're doing computer work, if you have a MacBook. On the Quest 3, I can have up to three monitors with Meta's provided software. My desktop can actually sit in my basement locked in a closet well, I can either be in any room of my home or far away at somebody else's house and still connect to my home PC and use it as if it was still with me. The Vision Pro. It lets you watch movies and play games on a massive screen. Well, the Quest 2 and the Quest 3 also let you watch movies and play games on a massive screen. The Quest 2, only being $250 US dollars, and the Quest 3 only being $500 US dollars. The Vision Pro decided to explicitly ignore advertising any sort of virtual reality advertising and basically just not really acknowledging VR based applications out of the box which I think is short-sighted and lowers its possible application pool immediately. The Quest 2 and Quest 3 currently have a much larger content library of immersive experiences that people are able to play around and tinker with. And they are able to further take advantage of a massive PC VR library via Quest Link, Steam VR, and Virtual Desktop. Now, let's cover one of the last things. Vision Pro touts being able to experience spatial video by recording 3D footage on your iPhones. But this technology isn't new. Even the 3DS had this recording technology back in the day, but traditionally low adoption of 3D playback devices has honestly allowed this feature to fall into obscurity and be reintroduced to something brand new to a new audience of people. Putting two cameras side by side and spacing them roughly two and a half inches from each other is all you really need to create convincing spatial video. If you happen to be watching this on either Quest 2 or Quest 3 with the YouTube VR application or have a supportive 3D playback device, you may notice I've actually put in the extra effort for some of the shots in this video to have full 3D playback. Spatial video. When this footage is played on either the Quest 2 or the Quest 3 as a raw file, a baseline feature of the Quest 3 and Quest 2 in a lot of VR oriented software is that you can tell the video player to recognize that footage is for 3D viewing. And thus, you'll have spatial video. Quest devices have recently been updated to 
very easily play back 3D footage recorded on iPhones as well. Zeta, what do you think about Apple's new spatial computing device called the Vision Pro? It was released today. Right? I mean, it's not even one day old yet, so... I'll have to wait for reviews before getting any ideas. But from what I've heard from my sources, this thing could change the way we interact with technology forever. That sounds amazing. I saw a video title that summarized Vision Pro as tomorrow's ideas, today's tech. But, as a developer, and somebody who keeps up with all the technologies I have at my disposal to create a futuristic or revolutionary feeling product, I would say that the Vision Pro is yesterday's ideas, making some major key aspects other companies like Meta have already figured out, bundled in a high-powered device that is kneecapping its full potential coming out of the gate. For as much as the Vision Pro costs, I'm disappointed that it's not really offering significantly more or even matching its competition as far as day-to-day -day features. If you've never experienced virtual reality or mixed reality before, and you're experiencing Vision Pro for the first time, you'll be experiencing similar awe and excitement that would be invoked by the Quest 2 and Quest 3. You'll be impressed because it's a new experience, and not necessarily because the Vision Pro is in any way a better investment. It's lacking a bunch of essential features right now, in my opinion. Some may defend Apple and say that they released the Vision Pro for a very specific use case and for a very specific group of people that are focused on content creation and productivity. But here's the thing. Nothing about Vision Pro's current software execution is revolutionary. The Quest 3 can already do, and in a lot of cases do more, than the Vision Pro can from a software perspective. And a few possibly new things I saw, such as eye tracks, selection, and personas, currently come off as gimmicks. And quite frankly, I think my eye printout I made for my Quest 3 has more visual clarity than the eye display of the Vision Pro. I can't say it's any less uncanny though. Another thing some may say is that Apple is primarily releasing the Vision Pro for developers to get their hands on the device and develop for it, thus making up for the lack of software over time. But as a developer of virtual reality and mixed reality applications, here's the rubric that I as a developer am looking at before I commit resources to a development platform. First. What's the current user base of the device? Second, how much revenue could I bring in? And would it be enough to recoup my development costs? Three, how much is the hardware so that I can effectively test my software? And four, can I currently afford the hardware? Is it worth taking out a loan or a lease for the hardware? Answering the first question, the user base is currently too low and I don't develop applications surrounding content creation and productivity. So that's one disqualifier. Answering the second question, if my products don't appeal to the user base, then the revenue I could possibly make is close to zero. In fact, it puts me in a position of debt if I cannot recoup development costs. Price-wise, the hardware is $3,500 American, but because I live in Canada and I also have terrible eyesight, I would have to spend over $5,000 Canadian. Unsurprisingly, developers have actually been opting out of their applications being on Vision Pro due to uncertainty around supporting a platform that may not be worth the development time yet. Judging things based on the current situation, the Vision Pro is a very expensive tech demo for a vision set by Apple. But Meta achieves this at a far lesser cost and at a fraction of the price. 
I would personally say buy a Quest 2 if you're on a budget or get a Quest 3 if you're really itching to try out mixed reality. But quite frankly, even on the Quest 3, mixed reality is still a very new feature that's yet to have its full potential realized by the current third party developers. I've personally only had since December to start using and putting it into my own projects. And Meta has yet to fully take advantage of and allow developers to truly harness the power of mixed reality development for user facing products with some rather frustrating imposed limitations. But that's a rant for another video. Overall, I think the Vision Pro won't really be a mainstream product anytime soon. The hardware will probably take a few years before it's cheap enough for the average consumer. And by then, we'll likely also have the Quest 4 or even Quest 5. So, that's everything I have to say about the Vision Pro. I don't know. We'll see how things go for the Vision Pro, but I can't help but feel a little bit of pessimism, at least for now. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.